Hi my sins! This video I'm going to show you guys how I managed to just sneak up to first place for individual rankings on the global server. I'm pretty sure people are just tired of grinding to achieve a crit on Einic, especially with the glitch reset during this recent update. Let's see how long we can stay there, um, but I am going to be guiding you on how to use the Slater crit team on Einic with difficulty extreme. And gear plays such a critical role, so we're going to go over that in detail first. So I'm going to go over them um, on how I have them set up on the team. Um, first, we're going to start with Galther. We're going to, you want to super awaken him four stars max, which is on the global server right now. We put HP defense set on him. Okay, His bracelet and ring is an optional UR, but I highly recommend it since you use Galther in almost everything from PvP <laughs> to um, all the guild bosses. The attack rolls on the bracelet and ring, you want to maximize them as close to 20 to 30 percent. Um, it's not your main damage dealer, but you want to aim for that percentage. For the necklace and earring, optional you are again, but highly recommended. Those defense rolls, um, you want to roll them from 25 to 30 percent total to reduce the HP loss, since Inix's uh, scoring system is the remaining HP and the starting HP. For the belt and rune, for Galther, we want to recommend a UR because you get that HP boost from um, URing it, okay? The HP rolls anywhere from 25 to 30 percent is um, your goal. The higher the HP pool really helps with uh, your score. Now I know some people do resistance rolls instead of defense. Um, that's if you have the time and the resources, then go for it. Um, defense does give you more CC if you plan on taking this unit to PvP or using them as a uh, sub-association for one of your characters. So either option that you choose for Galther on those roles, it's all good in the knighthood and it will work for this team. Now, if you look at the bottom there, for that common bracelet and ring, you can switch him out um, to the common because if his alt is doing too much damage. You gotta find your sweet spot because I know some of you lucky fellows got the green Galther 6 out of 6 and his alt might be doing too much damage um, where you wanna keep him alive. So you can switch those out, find your sweet spot, and go from there. For Dureri, there are a couple ways that you can do this. Of course, we want to super awaken her for stars max. Um, and you can do an attack crit or a triple crit set for her. Um, I've done both, so I do have two sets for her. On this run, however, I uh, went ahead and did attack crit for her. So for her bracelet and ring recommended you are, she is your main damage dealer. Um, for the first option, you can do uh, five crit damage and five attack rolls as close as, as possible. Second option, you can go all attack and do ten attack rolls as close as to max as possible. Or you can do the three crit damage and seven attack rolls as close as possible. Um, these rolls work well for attack crit or triple crit sets. All depends really on your playing style. Triple crit can stall longer while attack crit can break the shields, um, but sometimes I found that it can overkill. Um, your necklace and the earring for Dureri, we want to recommend to you are that. The target, uh, she gets targeted by the boss the most because um, he does prioritize attacking those with buffs on. Um, her defense rolls 25 to 30 percent is your aim. Uh, that way we can reduce that HP loss and she'll lifesteal it back in the end when we uh, wombo combo him into oblivion. And the belt and defense rune recommended you are, you get that HP boost from you aring those. My HP rolls are from anywhere to 25 to 30 percent. Higher HP helps with the score. I personally use triple crit 50-50% of the time. Um, I do have attack crit on with seven attack rolls and three uh, crit rolls for this. Okay. Slater. So Slater is going to be very, very important. Super awaken him, four stars, max him out. Um, he is on a crit chance defense set. Crit chance because we're using him for his passive, okay? Um, for the common bracelet and ring, we don't need to UR those. The crit chance rolls, we want to get closest to 45% as possible. The cheapest way to max that crit chance is that we use the common bracelet and the common ring so we can get we can maximize those rolls. We don't need a SSR or UR them because he's not our main damage dealer. 
And his necklace and earring is an optional UR for you. Uh, defense rolls 25 to 30% is your aim, reducing that HP loss. For the belt and rune, we definitely recommend to uh, UR those, giving you that HP boost. And the HP rolls anywhere from 25 to 30%. The higher the HP, the higher the score. Okay, you want to maximize Slater's crit chance. Um, that's going to give us the best chances for getting a crit with Durari's alt. 130% crit chance is the max for Slater cur currently. And how you can do that is that um, you upgrade, you want to equip all the weapon cosmetics, the four-piece gear set, maximize the rolls on his gear and his base crit chance after fully super awakening him. Plus, we're eating uh, crit chance food, which is another 20%. So we're going into the battle with 150% um, when his passive kicks in. Any additional increase, like from Helpham's buff, does not apply to the passive. It's only when entering battle. Then there's Helbram. Who knew that he would be such a critical player for the knighthood? Because he sucks in PvP. <laughs> but we're going to super awaken him one star, which is what I did, because I do use him for other knighthood bosses where I don't want him to do too much damage. Um, we do have him on HP defense, just like Galther. Um, he's going to be the same as Slater, where his bracelet and ring are an optional UR. Uh, the attack roll is 20 to 30 percent. He's not going to be our damage dealer. Um, necklace and earring, another optional UR for you. Um, and defense rolls for those, you're aiming for 25 to 30 percent to reduce that HP loss if he does get attacked. The belt and rune, we definitely recommend that you UR those because you get that HP boost. HP rolls 25 to 30%. Higher HP is going to help uh, your score every week. Okay. The, and just like Galther, if you have him 6 out of 6, then you can switch out um, his bracelet and ring if his alt or um, he's just doing too much damage. So find your sweet spot for that. Key additional notes for you is that we recommend to upgrade all five of Dureri's weapon cosmetics since she is our main damage dealer. This is difficult, um, but it should be a goal to upgrade all five of each and every one's cosmetics. Higher HP results in more points at the end. Outfits cosmetics are an optional to upgrade um, because higher defense reduces the damage taken, so less HP loss. And you can work at those. And the crit rule, okay, I, I really want to say this because before we get started, we want to finish Einek on Extreme by the ninth turn, or we're going to risk the devilish points deduction of negative 666. And the objective of the Slater run is to build your Dreary alt as quick as possible, alt him on turn three for his first stage, um, and the second fa phase we're going to depend on Slater's uh, debuff disable so that he we, we prevent Einik from stripping our buffs. Um, then we're going to build our Durari uh, alt and we want to set up for a gold Durari buff for that 50% increase and the extra evasion buff on her. You want to break his shield if he has it on and then we want to alt with Helbrum to remove his uh, remove Einik's defense related stats buff which is crucial as that buff one of the related stats is Einik's, uh crit resistance. Then we're going to wombo combo him and pray for a crit. <laughs> and then let's get started. Alright, so we eat, we're eating crit chance food. And with that gear guide, um, I really can't tell you guys a specific setup. So you really have to find what works best for you. There's no set way of saying this is what works. So whether you go attack crit or you go triple crit, and depending on who's dealing the most damage for you, you can replace those common bracelets and rings on Galther or Helbrum. Um, so you, you, you really got to find your playing style. On turn one, we're going to go ahead and move Durari's cards three times, and we're going to use uh, Helbrum's Poison. That way we can just build his alt as well, getting that free orb. Um, there we go. Oh, and we drew another Durari Strike card. That works in our favor. And as you can see, those HP and defense rolls work in our favor because they're not taking that much damage when they're hit. For turn two, you're going to move Dereri's cards twice to build her alt and kill him for the next turn and get rid of any two cards while holding onto your Dereri cards. Okay. 
And anytime the points system allows for extra points for dealing over 500k, then make sure you take advantage of that. We do have attack crit on, and we can achieve that without wasting our strike, but since we drew another pimp slap, we're going to use that for the extra buff. And it's going to be an easy 400 points going into the second stage um, with the 200 points from the guild boss accomplishments and dealing over 500k. And that can change week to week. So sometimes we might not, you know, go into the second phase with 400 points, but this week we do. So we're on turn four, um, second heart. We're going to save Dorari's card and use Helbrum to build his alt. And I usually do his poison first, so we keep Einik alive long enough to build our stacks. So we striked him with her rank one pin slat. We got rid of Slater's attack and, of course, um, debuff disabled him, so he does not strip our buffs. So on turn five, we're just going to go ahead and strike him with Dorari's rank two. Then we're going to get rid of Helbrum's poison. And um, Duray's not done yet. She's going to slap him again. And I think we're just going to use uh, Galther's Evasion Arrow now. Okay. Perfect. Evasion Arrow. Then for turn six, um, again, I always use Helbum's Poison first. So I think what I'm going to do is that we're going to get rid of Helbum's Poison. Um, we're going to Dorari strike him to break his shield, and we're going to upgrade for our gold rank 3 of Slater's debuff disable so we can seal him for 3 turns. So there you have it, Helbrum's Poison, Dorari strike to break his shield, upgrade with Galther's Evasion Arrow to get a gold rank 3 debuff disable, and seal him for 3 turns. Get that shit out of here. Evasion Arrow. And buff. You know, Slater's just like the Mandalorian. He keeps his mask on all the time because this is the way. <laughs> and he's in his metal dissolve mode for turn 7, guys. Alright, we're on turn 7. Einik, he's in his metal dissolve mode, so remember, do not strike him or you will lose five orbs over the course of the next two turns. And since this is turn seven, we need to kill him by turn nine. So we're going to move Helbrum once and pray for a combine the next turn. We're going to rank up Jareri, and I think what we're going to do is that we're going to go ahead and just use Slater's ult since we have a, a Dureri Pimp Slap to take away his shield on the next turn. Perfect. There we go. Buff herself. Go ahead and ult. Inix still has the HP, so we took that risk. And this is good for turn 8. So that was on turn 7. This is now turn 8. And we're going to go ahead and Dureri strike him. And we're going to continue to be petty and take his ult. Debuff disable him and buff Dureri again for that extra stack. And maybe um, for a card draw if we can get another Dureri buff on the next turn. Boom. Petty! Give me your fucking orbs. Woo! Almost killed him. I was so close. And this is kill turn. Now we need to Wombo Combo his butt. This move is crucial for your kill turn. Crit roll number one to have Einix shield down, which he does. We want to ult him with Helbrum to strip his defense buff that includes crit resistance. Crit roll number two, gold Dureri buff for the extra 50% basic stats increase, okay? Going on to crit roll number three is that gold Helbrum attack buff of the extra 30% of attack related stats that include crit chance and crit damage. And as always, pray to the gods for a crit. And we crit 10.1 mil, turn nine kill. We had 15 buffs on Dureri. And mind you, my Dureri is six out of six. And you can pull her on multiple banners, such as uh, the Part 2 banner or the Goddess Demon Unknown Races banner, I believe. Um, 
And that is how we clinched um, first place for the individual guild boss scores. And hopefully we stay there. I'm sure next week we'll be fighting that first spot with all of the other uh, crazy guild boss players as well. There we have it, guys. 5734. Um, I'll be uploading an updated uh, score for my hard score. I got 3633 this week. Um, take my advice. Do what you guys can um, just to continue to maximize your HP rolls, um, upgrading their cosmetics, getting the alts up for Dorari if you don't have her 6 out of 6 as I do. Um, and thank you for watching guys. I really, really hope that this is helpful for you. Um, please comment below or give me that like and subscribe if you want me to continue making these videos. All right. I'll see you later, my lovely Leesons. Bye.